Greetings from Imola and the 24hoursseries.com, which is round five of this year's 24H series for 2017. And it's the third of the year of the 12 hour races that are split across Friday and Saturday, where we have four hours today, 3 p.m. till 7 p.m. local time, and then kick things off again at a very reasonable 11 a.m. tomorrow morning through till seven o'clock once more. So there will be certainly changes in sunlight and the, the direction that is that, that is fired at the drivers, because I noticed on a quick track run that we did as part of our uh, team yesterday in a road car, the sun is glaring into the eyes of drivers leaving Ravazza 2, and that sun becomes very low in the sky at about half past six, seven o'clock. So that'll be something to factor in for the drivers as well, although most drivers will be carrying visors on their helmets, and the uh, windscreen visor will help out a little bit there as well. Already drivers clambering on board cars. This is the GRT Grasser Lamborghini, number 963. Just one of those cars here. Uh, Austrian team. So last time out that uh, I covered one of these events at Red Bull Ring, they were at their home event. They've uh, been to Ricard to do the full 24 hours without the interval, twice around the clock. And this time the two-parter give, gives us uh, round five. There are still rounds to come. Well, at Cota, which is the non-championship round that everyone is looking forward to, the other side of the Atlantic in Austin, Texas. And Portimao as well on the schedule at the end of August. My name's Johnny Palmer, joined by Martin Haven in the main commentary box. Joe Bradley and Andrew Marriott will be our voices from the pit lane. And GP Extreme have brought two of their Renault RSA1s. Uh, very closely liveried, though, Martin, so I'm going to leave that to you to try and identify the two of them apart. 27 and 28, yeah. I think it is. They're, in fact, two Renault colours, aren't they? Yes. Yellow and black. So uh, one's yellow and black, and the other one's... Uh, yellow yeah, and black. Yellow and black, too. <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see whether they have done door mirrors. Uh, from that picture, those door mirrors appear to be black. Uh, I'm rather hoping the other ones will be slightly more standouts, like fluorescent something or other, but I imagine they'll be black as well. Teams look at their cars in the garage and go, yeah, it's perfect. They're absolutely identical, both in team delivery. Mm. And then they forget that we're going to blame the wrong driver when he does something silly. Man just wandering past in the pit lane is our reporter, Andrew Marriott, who will be doing the first part here of the qualifying session. One hour of qualifying, and the cars... Uh, Starting to head out onto track now, led away by 008 now. Uh, 308. 308, that's, rather, that's right. Yes, they're, you know, yes. So we've got a view, a very limited view of the protected road and not much. Well, sitting beyond it, because that's one of the funny things about Imola. You, you are aware that it is named after the town of Imola, which is somewhere in Italy somewhere. In actual fact, it is surrounded by the town of Imola. It is literally almost in the town centre. There's the old town with the castle walls and the fortress just about uh, half a kilometre, a kilometre away. And when you're at the railway station, which is again about a, a kilometre north of here in the centre of the town, you can clearly hear the racing cars. So everything about this circuit is part of the town itself. Climbing out of Tosa, this long uphill climb, not as steep as the exit, say, of Eau Rouge at Spa and the long climb up the Kemmel Strait, but it is definitely geographically more challenging. And you come over the brow there at the top of the hill to the right, uh, left-hander at the Piratella, named after the village that is just to the driver's right, as you start then to drop down the hill from Piratella to the Aqua Minerale. You go around the playground for the kindergarten, and start the climb back up the hill once more. Legendary corner names. It's like going to any of these historic European tracks. You, you know, it's it's redolent of so much of our motor racing heritage. And here is the voice of Andrew Marriott. Well, I hope so. There we are. Talk about. Are we having? I know we're having slight technical problems. I try to position myself so uh, you can hear me. But talking about these Renaults and were they different? different. Well, well, one, one of, of them, them is, is because, because this one, one here, here, the 27, if you look on the back here, it's got the badge of the Automobile Club of Monaco. But if, if you look at the one in the garage, which has got problems now with the turbo, that does not have the badge. Now, try and spot that on your TV screen. And that's the only difference I can see. 
A little issue with Andrew, very echoey there. I'm not quite sure why that was. We'll have to have a little uh, technical addition to that. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's perfect for spotting because if he goes off in the gravel forwards, then obviously we'll be able to pick out the ACM badge absolutely instantaneously. We've got eyes like hawks permanently trained on the rear wing pylons of Renault RSO1s. Uh, watching there, one of our front runners, car number 10, the Hofer, uh, the Leipert Motorsport Lamborghini. Uh, we saw the Hofer racing Mercedes as well heading out. Car number one, Mikel and Chantal Kroll, Roland Egerman, Kenneth Hyatt, and Christian Frankenout are the five strong driver lineup in that car. Now, whether all of them drive or not remains to be seen. They're slightly outnumbering some of our cars. We've actually got still one single car entry, and we're all rubbing our hands with glee, thinking, Oh, we could all join Gustav Engeljaringer in his car. And Johnny and I, we could do a stint, yes. come back up, talk about ourselves, or Couldn't talk about just? our co-driving or each other in the next one, and then rush back down to do another stint. That would be fantastic if only we could drive. Mm. Uh, but Gustav Engeljaringer, because, it has an, because yeah. the A has an umlaut. Indeed. I learned that in GCSE German, although I didn't pass that. Um, Yes, it, one driver, and I'm sure that he will have a, at least somebody else, maybe an M Haven, joining him in that <laughs> number 93 MSG motorsport. Defin definitely not, if he's got any sense whatsoever. <laughs> no, not at okay. all. But, but we have, we've got a number of two car entries, we've got three car entries as well, and uh, I think Hofer Racing is the only five driver lineup, so um, that's going to be entertaining to see. And again, great views around the circuit. You see from this camera shot, not just the topography, but look, there's the service road and the river alongside. The river there down by, uh, that, that runs along the, basically behind the paddock, that's one of the reasons that corners like Tamburello can't have their gravel tracks extended, because if you do, the gravel track just sort of peters off and becomes a beach. Mm. And, so, and so the car sort of skates off down and ends up in the river, which as you'll understand is slightly less than ideal. But all the way around, you've got little farms, small holdings, vineyards, and so on. And it's uh, just a stunning location. Very unusual view of Aqua Minerali from the tower there. Gives you a great view of what the corner looks like as we watch the Hofer Mercedes starting to come up to speed, which then, Johnny, brings us to our class structure. The, the basic principle of these Creventic endurance races is if you've got a car, come to us and we'll try and work a way of fitting you into one of our classes. And if there are enough of them that aren't actually in a class, then hooray, we've got a whole new class. And, and they'll try and balance driver performance, power, weight, and, and so on, uh, to mix all these various different cars together in their different classes. The fastest of which is the SP2 or the A6 class. Um, so that those are the two fastest classes. And in the A6 class particularly, to balance driver lineups as much as car uh, capability, we have a variety of different options which we will get into after qualifying because the speed of your driver lineup can dictate uh, how much weight your car carries in addition to its basic weight and how much fuel you're allowed to take on at the refueling. So, uh, if your car is quicker than others, it'll carry more power and it'll be allowed to have less fuel going into the tank at refueling stops than a slower driven car. And if you're in a, a potential cutoff zone below the pro class, if you're in the AM class, then you can choose to set yourself a maximum lap speed or a minimum lap time, which you're not allowed to break. So you can then uh, set yourself basically a target per lap, and the closer you can get to that, the more likely you are to win your category. So on board in the number 24 Mercedes, that's the SPS car driven by Alexandre Cogny, uh, uh, Iraj Alexander and Richard Feller, and it was Richard Feller at the wheel of that rather pretty blue car. I kind of like that livery. Yeah. Not but seen sort of baby blue on a on a Mercedes before, but that's working very nicely. SPS arrive at racetracks with so much resource because they also took part in the uh, Le Mans Cup event during the uh, Le Mans 24-hour uh, event, but that's uh, either 308 or 908. It's 908, the Team Altron Peugeot, which has ended up in the kitty litter with smoking brakes, front right brakes. So I wonder whether they've been fully locked up into that corner. Is that Rivasa? Uh, it's a deep travel trap. Uh, which doesn't that... 
No. It doesn't narrow it down. It's, at all. it's for a VAT for two. So last corner would be turn 21, which is the corner. No, so we go no, back no. to the actual corner, which turn is for a VAT. Turn 19 is, is the last corner corner, as you yes. refer to it. Yeah. I just wonder whether so he's gone a bit too hot into 18, though, on very that downhill easy. approach. You come down the hill um, from the Variante Alta at a heck of a lick, and it's very easy to get it all wrong. Um, great viewing, is you. <laughs> Imagine, yeah. imagine what this was like, you know, with, with Vilner versus Peroni in their Ferraris and people hanging off those balconies. You, you, you could rent out your front room for, you know, several hundred lira, several thousand lira. Why probably. would you want to, though? You know. Just invite all your friends around. Well, there you go, yes. And, and, and for get money. Them to pay. <laughs> I see. Get them to pay. You have those sorts of friends, do you? Well, you? Do you want to view the Grand Prix for free or not? Well, in that case, bring money. Yeah. And beer. I would agree with that. Oh, that is that one of the car collection cars? Yes, it is. I yes. like that livery. Yeah, that's Blue and red well. stripes. I've not seen that on one of the German cars before. They, are, they have in the past brought three out of the RH, just the two this weekend, 32 and 34. And the 32 car, which is the Dimitri Parhofer, Max Edelhoff, Horst Feldmeier Jr. And Tony Forney, the driving lineup for 32. And it's Horst at the wheel right now. Uh, he, the things that he knows about racing Porsches, uh, very sick. I mean, he raced Porsches in the family for many years, but an Audi must feel uh, considerably different. We're currently under code 60, which is why your background noises are rather mooted, because everybody's going around at 60 kilometers an hour um, to uh, effect rescue of the Peugeot that went off. And this is in, in lieu of a safety car. Uh, green flag's now being waved, so we go green once more. And uh, most of us go green at any rate. Number 17 Mercedes has not yet realised that we have gone green. So that's the IDEC Sport machine of Patrice Lafargue, Paul Lafargue and Dimitri Jalbert. And who is currently weaving very slowly, Dimitri Jalbert. Now he ought to be in a Renault RSO1, having been a, a long time uh, Renault Megane trophy contender and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be right up his street. However, He's in a big Mercedes instead. Mercedes. And if you recognise Patrice and Paul Lafargue's name, they did Le Mans. They're in the European Le Mans series this year as well. But David Zollinger was the co-driver for the 24 hours. They've been regulars in this championship. And I think IDEX Sport have two cars this weekend. Yes, they do. They've got an entry in the SP2 class as well. Mini Porsche 991 Cup cars, and when we look at one of those on track, don't automatically assume it's in the 991 class because a lot of the SP2s are the Porsche Cup car as yeah. well. Building up to speed with Leipert Motorsports Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo. That car driven by Norway's Alexander Scherpen, who also drives a Ginetta in British GT. So there's quite a contrast mm. in, in uh, machinery. Australia's Morgan Harbour, Germany's Harold Schlotter. And the man at the wheel at the moment, Dimitri de Verikos, the Greek driver, uh, on quite a hot lap. And as he gets into Aqua Minerale, uh, coming up behind one of the Ginettas, the errant Peugeot has returned. That, that cat definitely has its tail between its legs as it comes into the pit lane. So number 908 will head to the Altran team. And that car, that team with two cars in the hunt, as you suggested, 308 as well. Also this weekend, we see the return of a team who last raced, or first raced, and last raced, in the series in the Barcelona 24 hours last year. And that's Team Africa Le Mans, uh, a South African entry. Yeah, the Dutch racing drivers don't go away. You think of him and Kor Oyser, Yes. Who was telling us at Barcelona two years ago that he had started over 900 races at that stage. Going to get a little more from Andrew Marriott, who is in the pit lane here at Imola. Yeah, well, I'm really excited oh. to see Sorrel van der Merwe here, possibly in his last race ever. He's 70 years old. He's a multi discipline racer, 11 times South African rally champion. Touring car champion in South Africa, and of course a winner of the Daytona 24 Hours in 1984 in the Creepy Crawly March. Um, I'd like to get viewers to uh, write in and tell us what Creepy Crawly actually was. And I guess you're still going to be with a bit of an echo, which I've also got in my ear, and it's very annoying. 
Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, we're still trying to work out uh, the uh, level and also the speed that Andrew is hearing his voice because it's uh, throwing him out a little bit. So we'll uh, work on that and fine tuning it as the number 11 Ferrari from Scuderia Praha going down through the Tamburello and now this very fast approach to Variante Villeneuve. Great view of Tozer. I didn't, I, I wasn't sure there was a camera position at that spot, but uh, it's a continuous radius corner. And then the end exit of this, as we said, is uphill, but the, the, the really big climb actually comes after the track levels out initially and then goes up for a second time and then crests this rise. And that's the section that Martin was talking about where you're staring at sky, you're staring at sky, and then all of a sudden Piratella comes into view, but you should have braked by this point. <laughs> Yeah, if you have them by that stage, then you're going too quick, definitely. Yeah, and you're going to pile into the gravel trap, which is fairly wide there. And I do remember cars running off in previous ELMS seasons and being able to escape as long as it's dry because it uh, offers a little bit of grip there, as long as you get, keep it out of the tyres. This is another part of the track, though, where the car can easily be spat right and into a tyre wall, which is uh, begging you in. Yeah out of Ariante Alta, over the brow, and then sweeping downhill hard right, where Alain Pross went off on a warm-up lap in a San Marino Grand Prix, here, Grand Prix here many years ago as a river of water streamed across the track. Through the first of two left-handers at Ravazza, the second one is critical because from there it is flat out to the start-finish line as Josef Kral completes a quick lap, but also all the way down past the pits, you go right, you go right again, you go left. None of those are corners, though, Johnny. Correct. Just turns, you're saying. And then right again as you start to break down into... Left again as you start to break down into Tamburello and ride the curbs. Nice and gently, we were talking yesterday evening to Tom Onslow Cole, who, as you said, was out here for the first time in the Ram Racing Mercedes, and he said, there are a couple of curbs that you might want to ride hard in a qualifying lap, but you absolutely do not want to be riding the curbs here in the race because they are uh, although some of them are quite low actually predominantly most of them are quite high they have raced moto gp they do race yeah it, it's a, a pretty demanding track for cars but a bike race here i think it'd be that climb out of tosa would be a really <laughs> really tough one every single lap however uh, lap from Joseph Kral puts him third fastest. Currently, Tom Onslow Cole in the Ram Racing Mercedes is fastest of all. That's car number 30 in their familiar Matt Gray livery. Uh, second, Dimitri Jalbert in the IDEX Sport Mercedes, the Scuderia Praha Ferrari. Josef Kral at the wheel is third quickest. Uh, Alexander Sherpin has now taken over Leipert Motorsports Lamborghini. That's fourth fastest at the moment. And these cars are all in the A6 class, and the Leipert Motorsport car is leading the A6 AMs, so they will have to make their decision after qualifying as to exactly where they place themselves in terms of lap time. It's not what your fastest driver can do, it's what everybody else can maintain. Your fastest driver might have to rein himself in a fraction if you set a bogey time that he is more than capable of beating but that the gentleman drivers in the team are just about getting to. And that's always the, the pro-am balance in the series, is that the pros will have a little bit in hand that they can use occasionally to get through traffic, but they will have to make sure that the overall lap time doesn't wildly bust the margin that they've set in that pro-am Lineup. So I think they may be monitoring sector times now as well. So it's not a, 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 a complete lap. So oh, really? in the pa yeah, in the past at Dubai, if a driver thought they were going to be you know, too hot for their delta time, they could just back it off massively in the final sector. You can't do that now. You have to judge it across all three sectors. Well, that makes it really hard to pass traffic. If you can't overspeed in one sector to get past a slower car, you know, there may be only one or two places a lap where you can safely do that. Um, gosh, OK. Well, yeah, you don't want cars s dramatically slowing and crawling to the line, um, as Formula One has graphically indicated in the last week or so. On the mm -hmm. other hand, um, not being able to get through traffic in a sector, that's really quite hard work. Uh, cameras are picking out the number 44 Mercedes, and that is currently lying in sixth in its class. So for you and for me, we shall identify that as the MDC sports car. And that's got Manuel Zumstein from Switzerland with Adrian Zumstein, also, funnily enough, from Switzerland. And get this, Philip Zumstein, who is also 
Yes, okay. You don't need me to complete that. So the Sumstein family and the MDC car uh, currently lying sixth in category, and they are 10th place overall. Elmar Grimm in the number 34 car collection Audi is ninth fastest, although he has just brought the car back into the pit, so I imagine a little bit of uh, swapping of driverage going on there. Also in the pit lane, the Grasser Racing Lamborghini, the green, green Grasser Racing Lamborghini, car number 963. And that is currently shown with Milos Pavlovic, the Serbian driver behind the wheel. Now he, I'm sure, raced here in GP2. Uh, or um, possibly even and World Series by Renault. Definitely ra uh, raced here, I think, in World Series by Renault as well. Um, so he's got knowledge of the car and knowledge of this track. And he is the definite pro He's the, the hot shoe in that 963 Grasa Lamborghini. Talking of Lamborghinis, of course, we, uh, our nearest airport into which we flew yesterday is Bologna, which is just down the road from Sant'Agata Bolognese. Sant'Agata is the home of Automobili Lamborghini. And normally when you're at an airfield, uh, there is a, a yellow follow me vehicle with lights on and so on that leads planes in to where they should taxi to. Um, and the yellow follow me vehicle in Bologna Airport is not a Land Rover, nor is it a G-Wagon or anything else. It is a Lamborghini Gallardo. Mm -hmm. Yellow Lamborghini Gallardo with checkers on the back saying, follow me. Yeah. We looked at it and said, that can't actually be serious, but they are actually seriously using it to lead planes in at Bologna Airport. So the, that little bit of glamour. Our pilot taxiing in could barely keep up, frankly. <laughs> the uh, 30 car is in. That's Thomas Lecol that's been driving the Ram Racing Mercedes. And uh, we have a cracking camera, which is at Variante Alta, right in the kerb, which will give us a good view of cars walloping that first kerb that Thomas Lecol re reliably informs me that you can hit that. You can't hit the second one, though, because it really does unsettle the car. Ah, Johnny, we appear to have yellow flags out at turn 14, which is the first element of Ariante Alta. Couldn't see anybody off there, okay. uh, but the yellow flag is still being shown. Um, Interesting. And that's not because our gopher cam has come loose, because it is nicely buried. Yes. Uh, or, or nicely inset, let's say. And it's on the... As you're taking the right-hand element, it's sort of on the right-hand side of the kerb, so doesn't go in there. Now, one of the other elements of the championship uh, of the series that you may not be familiar with if you've not seen a 24-hour series before, and why not, is the fueling regulations. To make life easy and simple, which seems to be, if there was ever a motto um, for this series, there are two mottos. First motto is, the answer's yes, now what's the question? Mm -hmm. And the second motto is, how can we make things easier and simpler? for everybody and by removing fueling from the pit lane or the pit garages during pit stops that makes life much easier because you don't have to have everybody wearing fire suits lots of pit lane equipment cars are fueled then what could be fitted into the car can be filled and it's half of that if you do it under caution so that uh, negates the advantage you might get by coming in during uh, a code 60. Yes, you can come in at any stage and actually refuel as well because they understand that at some stage you may be caught out literally the lap you're about to run out by a Code 60 coming out and so they will allow you not just to sit in the pits and wait but you can do half a tank and then keep going under the fair so you've got that option. Uh, saw some adjustments being made on one of the Audis, the car collection cars, to try and get a little bit of speed. Horst Felbermeyer has just gone back out in his car, number 32, which is currently eighth fastest. Tom Onslow Cole setting the fastest lap so far. Don't forget, this is a single one-hour qualifying session. There are no more shots at this. So Ram Racing fastest at the moment. And we haven't spoken about them yet, but we will from now on and through, throughout the race, is the Herbert Motorsport Porsche. Mm -hmm. uh, because car number 911 has now gone second quickest and just 2900s away from the grey Ram Racing Mercedes. That is the uh, Herbert, pre code Herbert Porsche. Third, now Hofer Racing's Mercedes and Christian Franken out. And he's the man who you always look to for the quick lap times in that car. He is now moved up, to, he's now moved that car up to third place. Fourth, Idex Sports Mercedes with Dimitri Jalbert 
having set that time and now returned to the pit lane. And Josef Kral squeezed down to fifth place by uh, in the Scuderia Praha team by improvements from others. He's on a quick lap, uh, sector one, sector two. And the Herbert Motorsport car comes across the line. Uh, number 911 does... Oh, he does it this time, yeah. 144.150, fastest lap of all. So he's gone from 2,900s behind to 1,500s in front. And it's interesting that Alfred Renault is doing the times because generally, Robert, is just a smidge quicker, in my experience. And the, the twin brothers, um, often we see Robert put in for qualifying, but Alfred's given the job at least so far. We're not uh, yet halfway through this session. Doing a 144.1 which is a tenth and a half clear of Tom Onslow Cole, who, uh, right on cue, is being sent <laughs> back out again. Job not yet done. Yeah, and I think we're starting to see a little bit of a times battle because Christian Frankenhout in third fastest in the Hofer Racing number one Mercedes has just set their fastest lap, a 44.5. So the top three now covered by three uh, 3,800s. Red flag. Mm. Red flag is out, so that potential for qualifying uh, excitement has just been eased. Clock has been stopped at 34 minutes, 36 seconds. So we will have 25 minutes of qualifying to follow. But red flags are being thrown, which is a very rare occasion indeed in Creventic racing in the 24-hour series. So we will wait and see what the reason for that is. But let's talk about some of the other classes as well, because our top 12 cars are all in the A6 class. Gravel on track at turn five. Well, I think then we know where the incident is. That is the first element where you go hard left into Varianti Villeneuve. Is it being stopped just for gravel, the session, perhaps? Uh, possibly but somebody must have left the gravel there and it might be that they are in the gravel trap. Yes. Because there is one on driver's right on the inside, which covers the old part of the track because Villeneuve didn't used to be a chicane until after that horrible uh, weekend 20 years ago. It used to be just be a flat out right hander in, there in are the way that Tamborella used to be a flat out left hander. There are plenty of cars heading in the direction of Andrew Marriott now. Very, very busy in the pit lane, Andrew. Uh, y yes, indeed. Well, the Scuderia Praha Ferrari, I call it a Scuderia Prague because that's the uh, translation of Praha. That has just come in. As you said, Tom Onslow Cole went out with very much a race face on him. And I think he's going to try and reclaim that pole. So Dan Shufflebottom just down here telling him what to do. Get it all right. And let's see. I think Onslow Cole will make the pole, though. Thank you, Andrew. And the red flags are still being displayed as all the cars are now back at the pit lane, bar possibly one. And if we get Martin to use the... Uh, the dibber, as it's called in some households, the remote control to flick from one side to one screen to the other. We might be able to work out whether one car hasn't yet made it back, but they are desperately trying to sweep this gravel off the track. And I think that's the major concern, to be honest, is the, the number of stones possibly on the apex at turn five that could cause punctures. Uh, everybody on page two is back in the pit lane. The Brookspeed Porsche is not yet. The MSG Motorsport Porsche is not yet, uh, but they may be on their way back in. Chase Owens just got back to the fueling area for the Brookspeed crew. Uh, and, and you see, that's slightly the... the oh, no, see, now I've ruined that. I've gone the wrong way on that, and I can't fight right. Let's try let's try pressing that button. No. Oh, no. dear, look, I've ruined our... How can I've, I've, how can I've gone... You've scuppered it straight away. How can away. I've gone one channel down in the wrong direction, and now we can't find it? That's what uh, free practice and qualifying is for. Right, that's find didn't work. Found actual TV now. <laughs> Tried 201. <laughs> it was in that sort of region. Chase Owen has worked his way out <laughs> of the fueling area. There are, did we say four pumps and eight um, hoses? Gu guns, yeah. hoses, yes. Guns. 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 The triggers is mm. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, hoses. So, okay, so there are potential for, for eight spots and no diesel cars. I don't think no, in the entry. No. So, so it's all, all petrol all and fuel, yeah. 
And uh, I mean, that's part again. of the choreography of a pit stop is calling your car in when you know there's going to be a, a, a vacant spot. Indeed. Not like on a Saturday morning at my local supermarket, at which you're waiting probably three or four deep in a queue. Now, let's just document who hasn't done an awful lot so far this morning. Uh, other than Joe Bradley, obviously, the number 28 GP Extreme car, uh, that has done... It, well, it's, it, it's shown as having done a time, but not sure how many laps it's done. Doesn't seem to have done any laps. Um, 173 as well. That's shown with a time, but mm. without very many laps. And that's Endurance Team Romanian's Toyota GT86. That's quite easy to spot because that's white with the red, blue, and yellow of Romania, uh, the na national colours on it. And I'm, I have actually seen that car out, but that's done, uh, that's done a handful of laps. Team Africa Le Mans, we've seen the car in the garage. We know they're here. We've seen them here. We've seen the car here. Car has not yet left the garage. That's a little bit of a worry. Force Racing as well, the number 29 Porsche. And that car doesn't seem to have gone out at all either. The car that the, the star name of which is Robert Lucas, the uh, Super Cup driver. And JR Motorsport as well. I haven't quite answered the question what's going on with that Dutch entry for uh, on paper Martin Lanting and Bob Herber. Um, JR Motorsport run their BMW M3s in a number of these races for a, a selection of of uh, Dutch peddlers who normally are supercar challenge drivers. And uh, Martin Lange and Bob Herber are on the entry list. The car is on the entry list. Didn't haven't actually seen in the garage whether it is there or not. Um, but it hasn't been out on track either. So there are so certainly Team Africa, Force Racing, and JR Motorsport. Um, Two of them I've seen, haven't, haven't set eyes on the JR Motorsport car, which doesn't mean that it's not here, just haven't looked for it. And uh, Johnny, that chap on his tractor with the blower, what carved you up so viciously yesterday. He did, yes. I know, I can't believe they've let him back on track again. I was on a hot lap and uh, coming were. over Variante Alta <laughs> and then got majorly cut up because he was concentrating on the stones and that, whether he was blowing them into the, the kitty litter yeah. at a fair old rate and didn't realise there was a Nissan Duke swooping down his left-hand side. Can so I got forced onto the grass. Can you sweep at Code 60? Uh, I'm, I'm not even sure we were... We were. I think we were lagging a bit behind Code 60. We yeah, were being very probably. We were yeah. going faster than the tractor, though, which isn't saying Barely. a great deal, I know. Barely. It took us about a minute to get by him. <laughs> and and uh, uh, not because... Anyway, we, that's quite yeah. a snazzy tractor with a... Uh, it do, it's not just a tractor because... It's the, got the, a blower the, the, and brushes. It, yes. Mm. Um, and you didn't see that utensil necessarily from the shot on the live screen, yeah. but uh, on the live stream. But it is uh, attempting to blow the stones off from other areas uh, away from turn five. It's a broom job at turn five, without doubt. And some... Well, just reattaching of front splitter stroke bumper, I think, possibly on the front left corner of the Herbert Motorsport Porsche. Yeah, digging a hole with a screwdriver, that's never a good thing, is it, when you're no. trying to then get a screw to go back into it? At least no. we're not at the point where the electric drill is out and then uh, cable tying freshly drilled holes that to make sure that bumper's not going to fall off for little, the rest of the session. little Torx bolt and it uh, looks as though the splitter's actually had a bit of a rub on something. Mm. Not quite sure why. Showing a scuff mark there on the Hankook, Hankook sign there. Of course, mm. all these cars running on Hankook tyres, various different shapes and sizes of them. But uh, been a major sponsor of this championship, this series, for a couple of years now, Hankook. And develop a tremendous tyre, regardless of which class you run in. Obviously designed to be an endurance tyre to run across, ideally, a couple of stints. And Herbert Motorsports Porsche, fastest at this interval. The clock stopped, by the way, so we're not losing any time here as far as qualifying is concerned. 34 minutes, 36 seconds still to go. We're losing time out of our allotted uh, lovely lunch hour. Yeah, that's a very good point. Mm. Lunch hours, I think hours. it is. <laughs> With, you know, when in Rome or, or Emilia Romagna, <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Do as the Emilia Romanians do. do. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I sure if that's a thing. I do like a good three o'clock p.m. race start, <laughs> though, and an 11 a.m. start tomorrow is very, very civilized. There is absolutely nothing about the way this is run that is not civilized. I think that's absolutely the correct word. That's that's very, very good. Well, so a little pause. 
indeed a hiatus. Yes. Uh, there is fresh hot coffee in the office. Unfortunately, that's quite a long walk away from us. Very long walk. Uh, uh, but the the hexagon just around the corner, that's got very nice coffee as well. But I'm the session's going to restart in less than yes, a minute, no. Martin. That, that's the frustration, isn't it? Yes, it so is. Not quite enough time to run off and get a quick espresso around the corner. Well, be patient, mm -hmm. because in 40 minutes' time, we should be able to do that. Oh, oh. excellent. Uh, and I still think we're in for a bit of a fight at the head of the order. Interestingly, the number one car now displayed as an A6 Pro car on the timing screen, and it wasn't on the original entry list. Always been an A6 Am car of mm. offer racing, so have they gone too quickly in this, this session already? Oh, do I have to get my piece of paper out and try and make sense of it in our, in our flow, vi flow diagram? I'm just trying That's to quite see quite whether a, any other cars have been moved from... Ooh. Am to pro as Hang well. Who's, who's had it away on their toes with my bop sheet? Uh, good question. Oh, Let's I hear from Andrew who. Marriott whilst you uh, hunt around for that. I've just been down in the garage with the American guys, uh, Charles Espinow and uh, the team are leading their category and I think I'm breaking up a little bit, but I'm going to back up. And uh, they're just explaining some of the very complicated rules to me about what happens at the end of the four hours. And I hadn't realised until talking to them that basically anybody that's on the lead lap, they all close up and they're all basically on the same time. So if you're almost a lap ahead of the race at the end of the four hours, basically you're just equal with the man that's at the front. So it's quite a lot of strategy and you obviously need to, to be full of fuel just near the end of the, of the, the four hour race they're telling me later on this afternoon so strategy a very big part of the game here uh, the very first Imola 12 hours absolutely yes and uh, not the first 12 hours in this championship of course and people like Charles Espenlaub and Charlie Putman uh, who are here with uh, Joe Foster in that pro sport performance car. They are very experienced in these split type races. It is called a 12 hours, but I oft often consider the four hour bit as a qualifying race effectively to set a grid for an eight hour race tomorrow. However, if you get a lap apart from a, an opponent, that is retained into part two. And it is crucial as an A6 pro car and as an A6 AM car within the AM division to stay on the lead lap throughout that first four hours. That's objective number one. Don't fall off the lead lap. Make sure you're in contention for Saturday morning. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, you, if you do have a problem in the first four hours, at least you've got eight hours to try and sort it out and catch up again. And cars go into Park Ferme overnight. So if you're running a little bit hobbled at the end of the four hours, then you will start on Saturday morning still just as hobbled and we'll have to come in and fix it. You're not yep. allowed to work on the car overnight. No silly Formula One rules here. Red flag, right, everybody fix the cars. And yes. We'll, we'll go again. However, what this red flag has done slightly is refocus our minds on the battle at the front of the field because having just seen the Ram Racing Mercedes being hit by Herbert Motorsports Porsche, now everybody's gone back into the pit lane, had a little bit of think, bit of a conflab. Right, what are we going to do? How much are we going to take out of these tyres, trying to get another quick lap out of them? And I think the battle has commenced again. Tom Onslow Cole now starting a quick lap on his first flying lap out of the pits. Herbert Motorsport haven't yet left the pits, but Christian Franken out is back out for Hofer Racing Mercedes. Alexander Sherpen out in the Leibert Lamborghini as well. So we've got three of our top half dozen already out of the pits and into uh, up or coming up to speed. Tom Monslow Cole already up to speed. And just 15 hundredths of a second off the fastest lap time. I'm sure he will relish the challenge of trying to go out and chase that down. A6 Am cars and A6 Pro cars are the top dozen. Then we get our SP2 leader, which is the APO Sport Porsche car number 80. And that is 13th fastest ahead of the 991 class leader, which is the American crude Pro Sport Performance Porsche. Uh, Charles Espenlaub was the man who was last in that car, although it's in the pit lane at the moment. That's the number 85 car. Our next class leader down in 21st place, leading SP3 and GT4 laps, Optimum Motorsport from the UK, the number 231 Ginetta. 
And that car currently being driven by... Dan O'Brien. Dan O'Brien, yes. Who shares with Adrian Barwick and Julio Martini of Brazil. Yeah. So that will oh, be Julio, the one... Julio, presumably, if he's Brazilian rather than Julio. Julio Martini, probably so. Uh, that'll be the one in the twisted uh, livery, won't it? Yeah. Uh, which is the one carried by Adrian Barwick. Let's hear uh, from Joe Bradley, who's down in the pit lane. Ah, good morning. It was more of uh, just a test, Johnny. It's really getting serious. We've come up with the 20 minutes of this qualifying session left. I've got a look at the pit, and notice the 963 Lamborghini having some small setup changes to the Also, a computer plugged in. That tells me that they're maybe going to experiment with a different engine, Matt, maybe. But we might be using more fuel, more power for the engine to start that engine. We've got the Scuderi Bra Ferrari just stood waiting for it to be given the got go, or get go, I should say. So we're going to have a cracking run to the qualifying in the, the battle for pole position. is going to be something to watch, I think. I think you're right, Joe. Thank you for that. Uh, you're there then for the remainder of the session for qualifying to set the grid for, well, principally we'll be focusing on A6 Pro, but it's important to focus on TCR as well, which is a, a very well attended class for this, uh, for this round at Imola because there is a touring car endurance race, I think in Mazzano next weekend too. So the pr plan probably for the teams uh, running in both the 24 hour series proper and the 24 H TCE series is to keep their cars in Italy and just transport them to the 24 hours of Misano next weekend. Mercedes for Hoffa Racing, heading out of Variante Alta. The livery moving from the SLS to the AMG brilliantly, I think, and uh, looks great on the new shape Merc, heading into this almost arena-type section, which the, where the house is just the other side of the wall there. And you're, you're nipping by people's back gardens and washing that mm. is out on such a warm day. Through the second left-hander at the Rivazza, and then pulling across to the Armco barrier. This has got to be for Christian Frankenhout, I would suggest. Yes, it is at the wheel of the number one car. Third fastest so far. Is there improvement on the 144.5 that Christian's already set? No. 147.8 from Christian Frankenhout. This car stays third fastest, therefore. Well, that might have been a bit of a loosener. Again, he looks from the body English oh. to the car to be pressing on through Tamburello and then rushing up to the Varianti Villeneuve around that right hander and then down to the long left at Tosa, hugging the inside of the corner and then waiting to build up the power from the middle of the corner all the way up the hill, climbing over the rise from Tosa, from the blind apex up towards Piratella. Fast left hander at turn nine. And then it's a double left-hander, effectively, because the second apex is, again, blind, but that's where you plunge down the hill towards Aqua Minerale. Tom Onslow Cole, now faster than... Oh, no, and uh, <laughs> Tom Onslow Cole, just as I said that, the Ram Racing car had gone quickest. Right behind the Herbert Motorsport car of Robert Renauer goes quicker again. So Onslow Cole at 1 minute 44.17 and Robert Renauer 1 minute 44.15. Christian Frankenout appears to have eased out of that lap, I think. The language of the car does not look like he's on a flyer, so... Ram Racing were for about 10 seconds on pole, and Herbert Motorsports Porsche is now back at the top of the pile. Hofer Mercedes third. Still no appearance from IDEX Sports fourth place Mercedes, Scuderia Praha's fifth place Ferrari. Alexander Sherpin, another quicker lap in the Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini. Doesn't move him up from sixth, but they have gone quicker. Seventh, the GP Extreme. Renault RS01, nobody in that car at the moment. Hmm. Scuderia Praha's Ferrari has just left the pit lane. And the camera is picking out at Tosa, Robert Renauer. And again, the body language of the car suggests that this is a cooling down lap. Uh, if you can get a couple of slower laps onto the tyre, then you have a chance perhaps to go again. 
If you found timing and scoring somewhere on the internet, then there is a column which is labelled ID. That is what the identification, the driver identification. It tells you whether it's set to setting one, two, three, four, or indeed, in the case of Hoffa Racing, setting five, which is Christian Frankenhout. But uh, GP Extreme Car number 27, setting zero, doesn't give us a Fred Fatia, a Jordan Groger, or a Bassam Cromfleet. And the car is in the pit lane, so that uh, probably explains the reason why we don't have a driver at the wheel. Yeah, nobody's plugged in, and therefore they haven't switched their switch across. But that will be particularly useful when we have either Paul or Patrice Lafargue at the wheel. Yes. I have to just remember whether uh, Patrice is... Patrice is probably number one. Yes, driver one, and then Paul Lafargue, driver two. So we will be able to identify... Which is which? Well, that would have been very handy over many years with the Felbermeyer Senior and Junior in the car. I think Horst Felbermeyer Senior has eventually retired from racing because I think actually he is quite senior. Junior is not quite so junior anymore as what he used to be back in, well, the very early part of this century. I suppose none of us really are, are we? And Sorrel van der Merwe, well, definitely heading towards the senior end of the driver lineup. If there is an older driver in the race, I'd be surprised to find that out. 308 on the pumps, Team Alcham Peugeot's Peugeot 308. And the Scuderia Praha Ferrari with Josef Kral again at the wheel. He's back out and starting to... Uh, looks as though he may well be starting a flying lap, certainly flashing his headlights of various folks. Number one, Hofer Racing Mercedes in front, and these are the cars that are currently third and fifth on the timing screen. 24 minutes still remaining, and there's a little list of drivers that have been summoned to the race director, one of whom is uh, the Bossa JR Motorsport car, number 114, the BMW that hasn't shown its nose outside the garage yet. I don't know if they did either of the free practice sessions yesterday, or the paid training, as it is. There was an hour of free practice this morning as well, official free practice, part of your entry fee uh, payment. Hope for Racing Mercedes still staying uh, on the case out of Aquaminerale ahead of the Scuderia Praha Ferrari. And Christian Franken out ahead of Josef Kral on the road by a couple of seconds. The gap between them, so not interfering with Kralder. Kral immediately now backs right off the throttle, exiting the very anti alta. So looking to give himself a little bit of free space. He knows there's nobody close behind him because he hasn't passed anybody in a while. And so then as he trickles down the hill from the very anti alta to Ravatsa, then from Ravatsa 1 to Ravatsa 2. This is where he starts to really nail the throttle now and build up the speed out of Ravatsa 2, sweeping left across and then right, right and right again as he comes past the pit lane, which has a definite uh, almost, I guess, 35, 40 degree kink in it midway down the pit lane. The garage is run out, but there's uh, what used to be the press center and is now being turned into a, a visitor center. So he is hard on it. Hofer Racing Mercedes also pushing on hard. Christian Frankenhout has now moved up to second fastest as Tom Onslow Cole has gone quickest of all. So Robert Renauer's Herbert Motorsport Porsche yes. is down to third. So all sorts of changes going on. We're now down to a 1 minute 44.009. So pole position should be in the 43s at least. Getting very lively at the top of the timing screen. Here's Joe Bradley from the pit lane as well. Yeah, as we, uh, as we look upon the, uh, the 963, the Lamborghini of the Grasser team, we speculated that they were tweaking the car for qualifying. Not the case. The guys are taking a sensible approach. They are, they are finished for qualifying. They are now prepping the car in readiness for this race start, which is this afternoon, of course, for the first four hours. But uh, these guys have kind of relinquished the need to be on pole position. There's no trophy for pole position. So sensible approach. We always speculate and argue and, and debate as to just how important qualifying is for a 12-hour motor race. Let the discussion begin. How important is qualifying? Well, not as important as lunch, definitely, and they seem to be um, getting getting their work done so they can go to lunch on time. Now, one of our Renault RSO1s is back out. That's not... Uh, which one is that? That's the number 27, is it? Let's have a look. Yes, yes it is. Uh, I don't know how I knew that. 
I don't think I did know that. Currently seventh fastest, and that's the one with the ACM sticker on the back, and there's the other one's got another sticker on the back. Um, so, yeah, hard to tell really from the front. Not sure that they've got different mirrors either. That's one where you sort of almost want to have a spray can of fluorescent paint, don't you? And just go down and while nobody's watching, just squirt some on the front of the car so you can tell the difference. Joseph Kral's just gone through to now set Ooh. provisional pole, 143.337. So wow. there are potentially four names, four drivers and four cars that could still take pole. Either the 11 Ferrari, which uh, Joseph Kral has currently uh, gone through quickest. Tom Onslow Cole in the number 30 Ram Racing Mercedes. The Hoffer Racing Mercedes, which is labelled as an A6 Pro car for the time being. Wasn't expecting it to be in Pro, but the number one car, Christian Frankenhout, done a 144.0 to put it third fastest. And then the Renauer stroke Ralph Bone stroke Daniel Alleman, Porsche of Herbert Motorsport. The 911 car is fourth fastest. Yeah, in fact, we, we've noted just now that Josef Kral went fastest. Didn't note that Tom Onslow Cole had beaten his own better lap, which was a 44.009, to do a 43.48. So he went nearly six tenths quicker than his own previous. And then Josef Kral has gone 14 hundredths quicker than that. Tom Onslow Cole has come through the fueling area and into the pit lane. Robert Renauer is in the fueling area, and Josef Kral looks like he is on another hotter lap. So will we go into the 42s? A 43-3-3 currently from Josef Kral is the fastest lap. Squeezes by one of the Peugeots, just where Variante Basso used to be, and heads to the start-finish line. And it's a 47-5, so not as quick by some margin. Now, is he trying to just keep some heat in the tyres or is he trying to get a feel for what the track surface here at Imola does when you've really worked the tyre hard and that car will be in the A6 Pro class and it'll be in the uh, handicap class so their lap time delta will be they'll be allowed to go faster than a 1 minute 46 because clearly they can and that'll then it would seem carry 30 kilos and have five litres fewer than the normal uh, standard fill. There's the number one Hofer Mercedes, and that car we really sort of expect to be in the A6 AM class, and probably looking at a 146 to 148 lap time, so BOP neutral. The other category, if you never dip under a 1 minute 48, your BOP advantage, and you can take 50 kilos out of the car, if you can, and uh, your maximum fuel allowance is a full 120 litres. Well, you just saw the uh, number 911 Herbert Motorsport Porsche being dragged back into the garage. That's fourth fastest. There is the number 30 Ram Racing Mercedes, which is second quickest, and they are pitted right next to each other, and they are likely to be uh, absolutely bitter rivals for podium finishes and victory here. Robert Renner out of the car. Looks like they are done as well. Christian Frankenhout is fueling for Hofer Mercedes, but is currently third. I think they're going to leave that. Can't imagine Ram Racing going, well, I don't know, 17 minutes. They might go out again, but perhaps have the best of the tyres. This is the Leipert Motorsport car currently on camera. That's six fastest. The number 10 Lamborghini. That's leading currently in the A6 AM class. And we'll wait to see after qualifying and after uh, driver's briefings and so on, before we get to the grid, what happens to Hofer Racing, whether they go into what they would traditionally be, which is in the A6 AM class. Yeah, it's just a question mark as to whether they've gone too quickly in qualifying, because you can kind of automatically put yourself in A6 Pro if you've mm. beaten the, the Delta time. Yeah, the qualifying range for A6 Pro is anything below a 1 minute 46 lap. So well, there you go then. Well, so on that, uh, the uh, Leipert Motorsport Lamborghini yes. has already done a 1 minute 45.9, yes. so that has automatically put itself in pro. Put itself up into the pro class just from one accidental quick lap. Uh, and by 12 thousandths of a second, so too is number 27 GP Extreme Renault RSO1, which is also shown currently, has been entered in A6AM, but that's also dipped below a 1 minute 46. It's done a 145.988.
So they may go and say, well, OK, that's just one extreme lap yes. and we're not going to do that in the race. So we would like to go into the AM class, please, because I think you can select, can't you, to go into the class of your choice in that category. Slightly surprised that Milos Pavlovich in the Grasa Lamborghini, you know, that they didn't go for any more of a time, but yes, mm. again, you know, the, it is slightly a moot point whether or not there's anything to be gained by starting fourth as opposed to tenth. True. I mean, the, the, o the only thing that you would say is, okay, well, you'd be a little less likely maybe to get tangled up in any a brouhaha at the start, but you'd hope that there will be little brouhaha on the horizon. Josef Kral, fastest of all. Uh, last lap for him, a 1 minute 53.6. His fastest is a 1 minute 43.3. So, in fact, he's getting slower and slower. You mentioned Milos Pavlovich. He was the guy that impressed Graham Goodwin and I during the uh, 12 hours of Red Bull ring because they run in the X6 AM class. They had a delta time to stick to. And Pavlovich, during his stint, was coming round uh, with such consistency. He was a tenth of a second off the delta, lap after lap after lap. And it was just phenomenal to watch. I mean, I've never ever been so entertained by a driver deliberately going slowly, yeah. if you like. <laughs> Well, but deliberately hitting, yeah. you know, he's he's the sort of guy that Norbert Singer would have loved at Le Mans in the Porsche 956, 962 era because you say, OK, you've got to do a four minute three, four minute three, four yeah, minute three, we'll four do minute it, three, no problem. four minute three. Yeah, all day, every day. Here's Joe with a little more from the pit lane. Yeah, always a very intense time as qualifying, hence a lack of drivers to talk to or a lack of drivers who are actually willing to talk to us. They don't really want to hex things. Now, I thought for a moment the 911, the Precourt Herbert Porsche, comes into this event as ever as favourite. These guys know how to win these races. And I thought for a moment that their qualifying was done and they were quite happy with, I think, their third at the moment. Um, and right next door is the Ram Racing Mercedes, currently in second. However, they've looked at data, they've put some new tyres on and... I know it's either Robert or Alfred that's gotten into the car. I think it's Robert. He's that isn't he? I'm sure Alfred won't mind me saying. Alfred, uh, Robert being strapped into the 911 portion now. And uh, they are indeed going to go and have a look and see if they can go ever faster around this similar circuit. And as I speak, the Ram Racing Mercedes car 30 with Tom Onslow call. He's been sat in the car. Just a bit of download data. They haven't really done anything to the car, maybe a different tyre pressure or something, but Tom Onslow Cole also leaving the pit lane to continue with this qualifying session, and he's soon to be joined by the 911. As you can hear in the background, that car now rolling along the pit lane to uh, go back out onto the surface. How quickly the session changes, because the 911 Porsche now slipping to fifth fastest, because Robert Lucas has found a time, uh, 143.8 then, for Fork Racing and their Olymp Porsche going third fastest. And what else changed there, Martin? Well, uh, Dimitrion Jalbert has gone out in the IDEX Sport Mercedes number 17, which hadn't been out uh, for a while. And that is going very slowly around the track at the moment. Uh, he is just mimsing, uh, and, and actually that is proper mimsing, really crawling. That doesn't look like a driver trying to find some space for himself. That looks like a driver who's heading back into the pit lane. He's trying to stay off the track as he goes into Ravazza 1. Two wheels out on the, on the Astro turf, and again in Ravazza 2, and he is crawling back in. He's doing more than 60 kilometres an hour, I would have thought, so I'm... Not sure that the pit lane speed limiter button is stuck on. Pit lane speed is 40, code 60 speed is 60, but that didn't look like it was going an awful lot quicker. So he had only just left the pit lane and he's on his way, or he is now back in, Dimitrion Jalbert. So uh, a fast Frenchman heading to the fuel pumps. 20 Ks in the fueling area, by the way, and he certainly ducked down to that limit in the number 17 car, but he wasn't going much quicker on the track, almost on limp mode, that yeah. Mercedes, but it got it home. Joseph uh, Kral is still at the wheel of the Scuderia Praha Ferrari. Gloves off, helmet on, he's strapped in, waiting to go. They were running the tank dry in the number 17 car. Just to see how much fuel it would take to get it to empty. Well, they, all they've done is an outlap. Maybe the outlap oh, right, was... Okay. 
But then even the outlap would be to get you, you know, to get you back to the pumps because the pumps are at pit in and the car, and obviously mm. the cars are further downstream and you can't drive back to the pumps. Not allowed to go the wrong way round racing tracks or down pit lanes, although <coughs> we might have... Uh, but uh, that was all safe. Ram Racing, Mercedes out on track. Tom Onslow Cole starting a flying lap now. And behind him, Robert Renner also on an out lap. We saw them leave the pit lane. Uh, second car in A6 Am, A6 being the top category in terms of pace as well. That's the number 27 GP Extreme car. South African Jordan Grogor is at the wheel at the moment. And that car currently lying eighth fastest, but second in its class by 58 whole thousandths behind the Leipert Racing Lamborghini number 10. So very good battle going on there at the top of A6Am, 58 thousandths of a second. That's about the speed that a paddle shift gearbox takes to change a gear. So that's how tiny a margin. I don't know what speed they're coming across the line. Let's say it's somewhere around 220, 230 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. You're probably looking at a difference at the end of the lap of about an inch. Yeah, maybe two inches there, uh, maybe more than that, maybe about a foot uh, between the two cars, which is not to be trifled with. It's very, very close, and both cars are out on track at the moment. Uh, just been handed a, a final entry list, and it, the word final is stamped on the top of this. Mm. So this is the official one, and thank you to Andrew Marriott, Andrew Marriott for uh, passing that to Martin and I. And the number one Hoffa Racing Mercedes is definitely an A6 Pro car, which right. might be a first. Always running AM previously, to my knowledge. So Christian Frankenhat and Kenneth Heyer will have the opportunity to go as fast as they like through the 12 hours. And drivers that have been steadily improving, like Chantal Kroll and Roland Egeman as well, have the opportunity to push as hard as mm. they can. So that's going to be fascinating to see where they weave into the regulars in A6 Pro. Yeah, that definitely is. That, that could be a very entertaining battle. And, and as you say, but by unleashing Kenneth Heyer and Christian Franken out, there will be certain stints where the car's moaching an awful lot quicker and right at absolute front running pace. So that's a, it, it's a whole different mindset that they've adopted there by opting to do that. And clearly they feel they've got the pace. Number 44, MDC Sport Mercedes. That's another of the new GT3 shaped cars. That car with Adrian Sumstein from the Zumstein family lineup. Uh, that's currently ninth wow. fastest, but third in the AM class. And the AM class is now covered by 0.275 because Jordan, Grog Jordan Grogor, Jordan Grogor, Jordan Grogor has gone quickest of all for GP Extreme in the Renault RSO1. The number 27 car now on top of the pile. Number 10, Leipert Motorsport Lamborghini second, and Adrian Sumstein in the MDC Motorsport Mercedes in third place, covered by 0.275 of a second. Fourth in the AM class is a yawning 0.07 seconds slower than that as well. So wow. an actual third of a second covers the top four in the AM class. Fifth position, uh, Horst Felbermeyer currently in the car collection or not in the car collection, Audi. Number 32 car, that's a further 1600s back. So within half a second, you've got the top five in the A6 AM class. And the Grassa Racing Lamborghini would be right in there swinging. It, because they haven't been out basically in the second part of this since it was red flagged, they are now two seconds down on pole in that class. But I don't see that as being a reflection of their race pace in any way, shape, or form. Some weavery going on to warm tyres up from one of our A6 Porsches. And that's the fork racing car. Oh, that is, yeah. The Polish right, yes. entrance machine. I should have recognised that because they're the colours that Force Racing use in the Porsche Super Cup. Ah, I was thinking, okay. oh, I, I know those colours and just for a moment, because I haven't Super Cup to a season, it didn't come to me. Yeah, so that livery transposed onto a uh, Porsche uh, 991 GT3 car. Mm. Robert Lukash, Patrick Iceman, and Shelko Dermich driving the, that car. They were down to have a fourth driver in the original yeah. entry, but Marshall it's just the three. Lezinski. There you go, yeah. So Lezinski not here, or not entered, or not driving. 
one or the other or the other. Ooh, just a bit wide into Rivatsa there. So this looks like a hot lap or at least winding it up to be a quick one. No, it was slow, wasn't he, through uh, Variante Alta. So this trying to get out of Rivatsa as quickly as possible. Yeah, a little bit of push. busy, busy uh, body language on the car. So I think he's building up to speed. Josef Kral's got his gloves back on, literally and metaphorically as well. So getting ready to go. And a great shot on our TV coverage of <laughs> of the <laughs> of the uh, steering wheel. Okay, it's got enormous Dymo labelling in mm. in in a sort of I need reading glasses, but I'm not wearing them in the car. The letters are you know war is declared size on a on a Dayglow background. Top two buttons pass and launch, and then below the pass button, which is the the top left button, flash or kill. Mm. What, do, what does that deploy? Machine guns or rockets? <laughs> I, that's, I really like that. Obviously, it's to set the headlight flasher and to kill and the headlight flasher. And then to knock flasher. it off again. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But, but just even the thought that you've got a kill button on the steering wheel is quite And quite oil comedy. slick was another one as well. <laughs> yes, a rear rocket launcher. Uh, 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 option to uh, push for a, a drink as well. Yeah. So that um, can be deployed whilst... The car is going round the track. Bit of a lock-up for the treble five. Janetta into Toza corner. And touch off the racing line, but recovered nicely. So that's the Team Africa Le Mans car. Yep. Of Jan Lammers, Sarah van der Merwe and Greg Mills. So that car... I wonder whether uh, Jan Lammers has uh, driven a, yeah, a, a Ginetta GT4 before. Well, he did. He drove at it last year, and he was out earlier as well in it. But it's now Sorrel van der... Uh, no, it's not. Porsche it's still off. Jan Lammers in it, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, number 40 Porsche. That's William Paul in the Brookspeed Porsche. And just for a moment, I thought we we're going red, and we are going red. So red flag again with four minutes and 34 remaining, 32. Right, stop, cut, clock stopped at 4 minutes 41 seconds. Uh, I would traditionally say that we're now at the stage where it's now 12.35, we're already five minutes over where we should have stopped. I would have traditionally said, possibly, session will not restart after that because we're sort of now eating into the car prep ready for the start of the actual race because we're doing free practice qualifying part one of race on day one and then part two of race on day two. Um, it's the it's positioning. Only, it's only four minutes, but it is. Yeah, he's just stopped yeah. on the exit, right on the very end of the exit curb at Tosa. So, no option really, other than really. To, to throw a red flag because Code 60. I don't think would. Well, might have been okay, but I think they may be you're very keen. unsighted as you come round Tosa. Yes. Long left hander goes up the hill away from the driver, but and so yeah. But also, might I suggest that they are keen to run this final four minutes and 41 seconds. And if you'd run code 60, it might have taken that time to clear the car. Oh, absolutely guaranteed, yes. That would have that would have ended the session under code 60. So we're pressing pause on the session just to enable it to finish under green, if at all possible. I think if something else happens in the remaining four and a bit minutes, then that really will be game over. Can we use the word kiboshed? Kiboshed is a very good word to use. I would have thought. That's the, that's the first trotting out of that of the uh, weekend. Like it, like it. There was another word you used earlier on today I'd never heard before. Did, and you know what? I, I, can't, I can't remember, remember it. Love me <laughs> what it was, but even as I came out with it, I thought, I'm not going to remember that in the broadcast. It will just, yes. My, my store of useless detritus. Uh, so William Paul in the number 40 Brookspeed Porsche. Uh, Porsche Cayman GT4, that car is. And he shares with Chase Owen and Rory Butcher from La Bella Cosse. Roy Butcher, another regular GT, British GT racer. And we're going to get a bit of a word from uh, Joe Bradley here, who is down with the number one Mercedes crew, Hoffa Racing, on the fact that they have changed classes, apparently, Joe. Yeah, I think this weekend I'm really going to miss Christian Frankout's explanation of target lap times and keeping to that target lap time instead michael crawl here who's also in the car the number one mercedes a change of class michael you guys have now gone to the a6 pro class you have run always in the a6 am class but now you can go as fast as you want yeah that's the first time we tried that uh, the points are very close for the championship it's very close so our only chance is to try something different so go in the same class as our main opponents, getting more points. Now we are more cars in the pro class, so the overall winner will get more points, so we try what we can. So I see, so by changing class, the potential is that you guys are going to get more points for a higher finish. Yeah, that's right. 
and uh, and uh, because we are so close with the amateur cars, they um, uh, changed the BOP time uh, during the night. So we decided we try it with the pros this time. All right. So this was an overnight decision for you guys. Yes. Yeah, just try something different, because the points are equal. If if you always do the same, we will not win. So we change the tactics. See what happens. I understand. Is it a, is that an aspect about this series that you like the fact that? nothing stays the same and it's all very tactical and you have to keep thinking constantly yeah this is the part i like i don't like the part that they change the rules every time so a change in balance of performance during the night uh, uh, the day before the race that's not good because yesterday we had the free practice everything was done to the previous reference lap times and they change it during night so it changes everything i don't know why they do it but that's life <laughs> I take it that doesn't make a difference to the car itself. It's not like you change the setup or anything. The car's exactly the same. Cars, are, yeah, it's not the same because we have 20 liters less now. We have to put weight in now, so it changes completely. The the setup has changed. It's uh, 50 kilos more and 20 kilos less fuel, so that changes a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for clearing that up. Michael Kroll there, just clearing up that aspect of why the number one hole for Mercedes has moved into the pro class. And I'm going to leave Martin Haven to explain the balance of performance sheet that we were handed earlier. Well, yeah, it's cleared some things up, but it's also provided a number more questions, generally speaking. But there's been an adjustment by the sounds of things, Martin, to even the sheet you're holding your right hand. No, because that was issued today, the 30th Fine, so of June. So that one. is today's current one. So, uh, well, uh, it... it it goes on for two pages mm. as the Brooksby Porsche has been craned onto the flatbed. So we're about five minutes away from a restart. Uh, predominantly, we're looking really at the A6 class, which is the, the fastest cars in the field. Um, they are the you, you know some Porsche Super Cup and GT3 cars and so on. Predominantly, it's a GT3 class. And there are three ways of slicing that particular onion subclass. A6 Pro or A6 AM, but within the AM class, you can select your target lap time, basically, that you do not exceed, and that's to suit the, the abilities of your driver lineup. A quicker driver may have to rein himself in not to exceed it, and some of your gentleman drivers or less experienced, the AMs, if you like, in the field, may have to really struggle to get to there. Um, and there, there, are, there are two basic lap times, a one minute 46, if you go, if you can, or you do regularly go below that, you will be in the A6 Pro class. And that is the lap time that has moved overnight. Uh, I don't have a previous sheet to tell me what it would have been, but from uh, listening to Mikael Kroll, um, the fact that it's moved to 1 minute 46 basically catches, I think it throws the net a little wider. They, it, it was presumably a 1 minute 45 or a 1 minute 44 before that if you went faster than that, you'd be in the pro class. But now it's been eased out to a 146. It catches more cars. And so they have found themselves, by dint of all being able to do that, or by dint of all doing that, going into, and this is based on yesterday's testing, not free practice this morning, they have found themselves at Hofer Racing automatically in the pro class, which, as he said, means you carry more weight in the car, you carry a bit of extra ballast, you are allowed to put less fuel in each time. Looking at the number 27 uh, car, the GP Extreme at Renault RSO1, Jordan Grogor, the driver who put that into first position in the A6 AM class, and the AM class breaks down into two particular categories. If you set yourself a lap time in the 1 minute 46 to 1 minute 48 group, then you're in the BOP neutral, which means that you have 100 litre maximum fuel, uh, 105 litre maximum fuel capacity, but no extra ballast. If you say we're never going to go faster than the 1 minute 48, either we can't or we've just decided we're not going to in the AM class, then you have a 50 kilo weight break, so you can run... 50 kilos lower than the minimum mandated for the class and you can take a, a maximum of 120 litres. And that's patrolled by the marshals as we go green for the final four minutes. That's patrolled by the marshals at the fuel pumps and there will be a sticker on each of the cars by the fuel hose nozzle and uh, the fuel filler hole. Um, 
to, uh, to tell the marshal how many litres of fuel the car is allowed to have. So if you're only allowed to have 85 or 95 or whatever, he'll see that you've put 120 in and then there'll be a penalty to serve if, yeah. you, if you try and circumvent the rules by being a clever dick like that. Yes, yeah, so that the marshals at the fuel tanks don't have to have a full list of the cars and the various different uh, complications of you know, the amount of fuel, which class they're in, how much fuel can be put in. It's just simply uh, dictated by a sticker right yep. next to the aperture, as you say, and uh, can be monitored easily then by the officials who are on site at the fueling area. And again, for, for let's, let's go to another class, SP2, which again is, is predominantly 991 Porsches and so on. Uh, there are basically three fuel allowances based on your lap time combined with the minimum weight of the car you're running. So you get most fuel if you are going no quicker than a 1 minute 50 and your car weighs 1,250 kilos, mm -hmm. then you get 120 litres. The least fuel allowable will be 80 litres and that's a car running down to a minimum weight of 750 kilos, so 500 kilos lower. So 750 kilos, and if you're dipping below the one minute 48, then you get a parsimonious 80 litres per time. So, you know, you get a big old heavy car that's not going as quick, but you're allowed to do longer stints and spend less time if you've got some fleet of foot young thing uh, that is very light and a lot faster, then you're going to have to come into the pit lane more often. So you've got power to weight ratio, balance of performance, but you also are then using pit stop time and especially refueling time to equate the speed of the car combinations there as well. So there, there are, it's a little bit like being a handicapper for for a race at Silverstone like, like the Pomeroy Trophy, you've got any conceivable car is allowed in, no matter what you've done to it, or what, what its performance is from a, a, an Edwardian vintage to a Mark II Cortina or a Mark III Cortina in absolutely standard road trim to basically some flat out GT3 race car. Mm. And the man who is doing the, there, the handicapping, what we now would call balance of performance, sets them off at different times. So the ideal is that they all, in theory, reach the finish line at exactly the same time. And that's the idea here, except they all have to start at the same time as well. So, so there's a different way of doing it. So the 11 car are getting fueled now with just 90 seconds to go. So this is perhaps just to see how much fuel they can get in. And well, I think they just drove round to right. come in and fuel up ready to ready start the race. The race because of course, yeah, in true. a minute and 20 seconds, qualifying is over. You can, you, you can go and then refuel your car down at the pumps for the race. But I think they've decided not to bother doing it. However, the Preco Porsche, the Herbert Racing 911 is definitely on one. This is Robert Renau. We saw him go out and Tom Onslow Cole and Christian Franken out as well before our most recent red flag. But I think the Herbert Motorsport Porsche might just be looking to try and take pole away from Scuderia Praha. He'll squeeze one more out of it, even if he doesn't manage mm. it on this lap. 911 driven by Robert Renau, then about to cross the line and trying to find something like seven tenths of a second and in front of him is robert lucas he's in done the porsche it. racing porsche in not fact, only did he yeah, find seven wow. tenths he's found Crikey. nine tenths of a second so therefore gone two tenths quicker than joseph kral's time and joseph calls ferrari is still in the fueling area as we've yeah. mentioned so he's not going to get another bite of the cherry robert renauer will be able to get one more lap out of this qualifying session well, his worry might be Robert Lucas, but Robert Lucas in front of him just done a 1 minute 45.3 to the 43.1 of Renault. Renault has set the fastest lap of anyone, and therefore currently 911 is about ready to start on pole position. And that looks as though they've just said to him, OK, ease off. Oh, I don't know, though. Uh, just in front of him, Robert Lucas took a little bit of the inside of the Puratella, kicked up the dust. Again, an indication, although it was raining cats and dogs on Thursday, that uh, it is still quite dry around here. We've already had one harvest, um, one, one grain harvest. I didn't know if it was corn or barley that had been harvested, but they've certainly harvested here already. Lots of haymaking going on as well. The summer has started early. It's been quite hot. Uh, does look as though Robert Renau might still be on it. Robert Lucas 
coming to the line as he's already down into Rivazza 1 and Rivazza 2. We might end up with an all Porsche front row. That could mm. be quite entertaining, couldn't it? Yeah, 29 is fourth fastest at the moment and needs to find half a second on the two cars ahead of it. The 29 Fork Racing Porsche, which goes across the line now to do a 143.5. It's improvement, but it doesn't improve the position nope. on the grid. Renault has gone through slightly slower, but only just yes. two hundredths of a second slower. Well, he could start the second race on pole position then with that <laughs> second fastest. And do you know what? That's a, a little bit of a belt and braces thing. Now he really has rolled off the throttle because mm. he's taken the chequered flag. But they're sort of going, all right, uh, you've got 26 seconds. Do another one just in case for some reason they take your fastest lap away. Yeah. I, I quite like that. Or did he just go out and say, hey, it's my team. I'm going to have fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the mechanic just walks away from the time he's through there holding up two number ones. He's exactly right. Either one of those laps would be good enough for pole position. Yeah. Yeah, both within or below two tenths of a second quicker than the Joseph Kral's time and the 11 Ferrari, the Scuderia Praha mm. Ferrari 488. So they have a margin on single lap pace, they would suggest. Although, of course, we've got to think about uh, the, those cars fully fueled as well. Here is the full result of qualifying then 143.126. And the Herbert Motorsport crew didn't need the 143.144 that uh, Robert Renau set on his final lap. Two tenths clear of the Scuderia Praha Ferrari 488 of Joseph Kral and Yuri Pisaric now, just the two drivers in that car from the 30 Ram Racing Mercedes, also a two driver. Mercedes AMG number 30, Tom Onslow Cole doing the time of 143.482. Fork Racing's powered by Olymp, Olymp 991 GT3R with Robert Lukash at the wheel there doing a 143.555 from the Hoffer Racing, new to ASICS Pro Mercedes, fifth fastest. GP Extreme's Renault RSO1 was sixth quickest from Edex Sport and their Mercedes seventh. Uh, the Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini Huracan was quickest of the... No, 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 it that was the quickest uh, of the Amcars, was it? Sixth yes. fastest is the quickest of the Amcars. That's Quite a really right. good lap from them. Yeah, and then the Lamborghini uh, of Morgan Harbour driving that, the number 10 car, yep. from uh, the MDC Sports Mercedes, number 44, ninth fastest, and then the 24 SPS Automotive Mercedes. And just on our timing screen pops up car number 911, lap time set at 12 hours 46 minutes, cancelled for not respecting track limits at turn 19, which is Ravazza 2. So one of his laps has gone, but it was the second fastest because the timing screen sh still shows the 43144 lap as being the one that has secured pole position. Well, and that was the and second one. That was the last one he did. Oh, it was. So it was yeah. a 136 before, wasn't it? Yeah, so 144. So that belt and braces approach, ah, I might have gone wide. Right, do another one. And luckily, they had 20-odd seconds to do so. Yeah. So let's go down through our classes then. Pole Citizen SP2, that's the number 80 APO Sport uh, Porsche. Pole sitter in 991 class. That's the number 85 Pro Sport Performance Porsche. And those cars 14th and 15th overall. 25th overall, Optimum Motorsport Ginetta. That is the pole sitter, car number 231 in the SP3 GT4 category. And we have a pole sitter in the TCR class, about whom we have not said a dicky. Uh, so let's just nominate that. That's the Speed Factory Audi RS3. Now, this is the latest of the TCR chassis to come out of Seat Sport in Barcelona. The Audi is basically uh, on the uh, Seat Leon architecture, Seat Leons we're used to seeing. But there are a couple of those. Speed Factory Racing have got the TCR pole position with that Audi. And there is one further pole sitter. It's in the A2 class, and that is the Cooksport Renault Clio. So congratulations to those boys. And that was uh, Josh Cook, who set the pole position lap time in their Clio Cup car. So those are your pole sitters. We have had 37 cars qualify. Question mark over whether we'll see JR Motorsport in the race or not.
a corner that the 911 car uh, went a little bit too hot, but did do a quick lap nevertheless. We'll get some reaction now from Joe Bradley, who's down in the pit lane with the crew from 911. The car has just arrived with that number one in the electronic scoreboard that these cars carry. Did not tell everyone the position in uh, qualifying and the number shown in uh, bright orange light there as the number one 911 is pushed firstly into the pit lane so that the crew can then pull it backwards so that the car can back get backed up into the garage a very quick turnaround because we'll be gridding these cars up very shortly uh, probably not time for a, maybe a, a quick working lunch for these guys when we get robert out of the car we will be able to have a word with him he's obviously still in the car just having to back the steer the car into the garage for the crew he steps out of the car to the applause and high fives from his teammates daniel alleman and ralph bourne his brother still working on uh, data probably at the computer desk let's get robert out uh onto the pit here and we'll get a chat to him and find out uh, what that was because that really was a qualifying uh, a qualifying attempt by robert there there was no question about that that wasn't just pottering round at the time kim he went out and his only objective was indeed that poor position for today's race. Congratulations, Robert. That was outstanding. You gave us quite an exciting finish there. You guys are now on pole. Congratulations. The first 12 hours of Amola. How are you feeling? Um, it's great. Um, really good track. Very fast. Um, yeah, I like this track. Um, last year, I went here with the European Le Mans series with the RSR and we won the race. So hopefully we can win this race as well. Ah, that's the objective. When you left the pit lane, Robert, was your was your mission to get that pole position? It certainly looked like it. Yeah, um, we had that, it was the last um, shot for us, so yeah, I, I was lucky because I had no traffic in the last two laps. So um, yeah, sorry for Tom. I I went in in front of his car on his quick lap. All right. Um, yeah, shit happens. Sorry for him. <laughs> that's what it, that's called racing, yeah. I think. So I'm sorry for him because he was um, very quick as well. Yeah. And yeah, but it, but it happened. Well, we've got the race ahead of us very quickly turn around to this afternoon. Um, what's the thoughts about this afternoon's race? 12 hours around here, firstly, with four hours today, the remaining eight hours tomorrow. Oh, OK, as you said, we have four hours today. Um, I will start the race and then um, Ralf Bohn and Daniel Allemann gets into the car. My brother is driving only tomorrow, so yeah. We try to do our best uh, yeah, hopefully we can be on the top of the ranking in this evening. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys are the champion until we see you on the grid. Well done, Robert. Robert Renauer, our pole position for this afternoon's 12 hours of Imola. Splendid job there by the Precote Herbert Motorsport pilot. Apologies for the language used there by Robert Renauer. And my thanks to Andrew Marriott and Joe Bradley for their hard work in the pit lane. Also, thanks to Martin Haven and from Johnny Palmer here in the commentary box at Imola. Very much looking forward to part one of the 12 hours of Imola a bit later on today. Join us for the 3 p.m. local time start. For now, though, it's bye.